Hi everyone and welcome to the Colouring Basics series on my channel. If you want to learn more about adult colouring please take a second to subscribe. It means you'll see all the content I post and you'll never miss a tip or trick. So on this video which is the first in a series I'm going to be explaining how to use the colour wheel. Now I know that a lot of people find this quite puzzling so like everything I do I'm going to make it as easy and simple to understand as I possibly can because I hate things being overcomplicated. So the first and most important thing you need to understand about the colour wheel is that each colour is always positioned in the same place on every single wheel. That's in rainbow order. And the rules that you have to follow to find colours that look good together is always the same. So it doesn't matter what kind of colour wheel you have, whether it's a physical one like this or a basic image off the internet, you'll be able to use it just the same. Now this one I have here is quite complex looking but don't worry about that, ignore all the little boxes and bits for now and let's just concentrate on the basic colours that run all the way around the edge. These are called hues which is just another word for pure colours. So the wheel has red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet hues and then in between all those we have the in the middle colours so basically a mixture of the two beside it like the yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green. Now the first thing you need to know is that contrasting colours will always sit opposite from each other. They hate each other, they're as far apart as they can possibly be and it's these colours that make the most impact when they're put together. They make each other pop. So here we have blue and orange, both opposite to each other on the wheel. They contrast each other so much because they're as far away from each other as they can get. There's nothing you can do to the blue to make it orange, there's nothing you can do to the orange to make it blue. It's not like red and orange next to each other which are really quite similar looking. So first lesson, if you really want to make an impact with your colouring and get those colours all popping off the page, choose opposite colours. The jargon word for this is complementary, but to me that's neither here nor there, so I use opposite because I always know where I am with that. Now I wouldn't recommend that you use opposing colours on every single part of your colouring page. If you did that, the entire thing would be so jarring and vivid that nothing would really stand out to the eye. So use the opposite colours technique sparingly for the most impact on just one element of the page that you really want to stand out. Imagine how much better your page would look if one element really popped and the rest was lovely and cohesive, like this blue and orange parrot on a background of leaves in different shades of green. Now, if you want the colours to pop but you also need more than just two, this is technically called split complementary, but what does that even mean really? Well, what you must do here is choose a colour to start with. So say that you really want green on your picture but you don't know what goes with. So instead of going opposite or complementary, we begin to go there and then we kind of part the Red Sea and look at the colours next to it. So instead of choosing that directly opposing colour, we're splitting across and choosing the two next to it. This makes your pictures pop just the same, but it gives you a few more colour choices and it's ever so slightly more toned down, so it's not super in your face. Now you can go even further with this triangle and stretch it out a bit by choosing colours that are equally spaced from each other. This is called a triad, so it's easy to remember because tri means an equal three. So even though these colours are spaced equally apart from each other on the wheel, they create a harmonious look together because none of them are the extreme opposites of each other. Take for example yellow, blue and red. They're completely different colours entirely but they aren't as jarring and contrasting as opposing colours so they work really well together. There's also tetrad which is four colours either in square formation or rectangular formation. But as this is a colouring basics video we could pretty much go on and on connecting colours so I'm not going to go into these too much. All you need to know is that it's a square or rectangular formation on the colour wheel which gives you four well spaced colours to put together. The final one to chat about is more about creating a tranquil unified look rather than having opposing colours popping here there and everywhere. This is called analogous, another weird name, but it just means the colours next to each other. So unlike the complementary or opposite colours, these colours are neighbours on the wheel and there's no gaps between them. This creates a look of serenity and calm, so it's best to use analogous colours in nature scenes or pages where you want a smooth gradient of colour. These colours are not designed to pop or stand out, but to have the opposite effect and give a milder, more pleasing and restful look to your page. 
Another interesting thing about the colour wheel is that half of it's made up of warm colours and half cool colours. The warm half includes the fiery colours like red, orange and yellow and these colours create a look of passion, happiness and energy. So think about how you want your coloured page to feel as well as look. Do you want it to have this warmth and vibrance or do you want it to look more chilled and calm? If so, use the cool side to give a relaxed and peaceful atmosphere to your page. So hopefully you've understood how to choose and combine colours from the wheel to make your colouring stand out and give a certain feel to the page. But there are more colours in the wheel than just the standard bright tones that we see on the edges here. What if we added white to the colour? Obviously it would make it lighter, like when we add white to red it makes pink. What if you want to make your pages even richer by using this scale of shades rather than just red, orange and blue? Well this is where TTS comes in, tints, tones and shades and it's easier than it sounds to decipher. Now we've all heard those three words but do you know what they actually mean when it comes to colours? If not you're about to find out. So let's start with tints. You create tints when you add white to a hue. Now remember a hue is just the pure fully saturated colours that you find on the edge of the colour wheel. So for example if we add white to red violet let's have a look on here. So red violet adding white creates a beautiful shade of light pink. Now adding white to orange Let's move it across here so adding white to orange gives us peach which is a tint of orange and adding white to green let's say this green here this gives us a beautiful pale mint color which is obviously a tint of green so to get a tint of a color you need to add white you might say that tints are akin to pastel colors uh, but you know they're lighter they're less vibrant versions of the standard bright colors now tones are created when you add grey to a colour. Now as you can see from the central section on each of these colours, so we're looking at this whole section here and then the central panel here, you can see that these are the tones and they're all quite dull. It really dulls the colour when you add grey, so it desaturates the colour and that's how we identify tones. It's a colour that's intensity has been literally toned down by adding grey. The last one is shades, these ones right in the centre here. And this is easy to remember because when we try and get shade on a sunny day, we go to the dark areas. So shades are when we add black to a colour. Now doing this makes those original colours, those hues, very dark and deep. They're not dull like tones and they're not light like tints. So you end up with this very rich and moody palette which can really give some atmosphere and depth to your colouring. Combining tints and shades, the lightest and the darkest of all the hues, can give a very compatible and harmonious look to your colouring, whilst giving it a more complex look than it would have if you'd chosen to use the bog standard colour wheel hues all the time. So just to clarify, tints are when you add white to a colour, tones are when you add grey to a colour, and shade is when you add black to a colour. So now you can identify tints, tones and shades. How do you find these within your different colouring materials? Now this is where colour palettes really come into play. Pretty much every colourist swatches out all of their colours onto a chart or in a swatch book, so it will be easy to find like for like colours when referencing a photo. For example, here's a beautiful colour palette taken from Chinese lanterns hanging against the sky. Now as you can see, none of the colours in this palette are fully saturated hues. They're all either tints, tones or shades of some type. Now all you'd need to do is check this palette against your colour chart and identify the closest matches. If you do find this difficult, there is an app you can download called Arty, and that lets you upload a photo and tells you all of the closest matches in Prismacolor, Polychromos and Luminance pencils, so that's really, really handy. It also means you can take your own photos and pull the corresponding colours from it, so if you have a particularly brightly coloured flower in your house or a really dramatic book cover that you love, you can take a picture of it, upload it to Arty, and find out all the colour equivalents in your pencil sets. 
So that's it, that's the colour wheel simplified, demystified and hopefully understandable enough for you to utilise when using colours for your coloured pages. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed please click subscribe and the thumbs up button. See you soon on Colour with Claire.